from New York, the greatest city in the world, it's The Late Show with David Letterman. To my chair and music from Bruno Mars. Plus Paul Schaefer and the CBS Orchestra. Loss results are not typical. David Letterman. I, uh, what? What? I just had something from one of those vendors on the corner. <laughs> I'm a little up. Oh, boy. Uh, I'm a little bilious. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the uh, Late Show. I'm Dave Letterman, uh, Country Music Entertainer of the Year. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Anybody? Uh, well, this is a woman right here from San Diego, and you know that uh, uh, stranded uh, cruise ship? Uh, they finally, after five days of being stranded, uh, the cruise ship, they towed it into to San Diego, and the passengers, honest to God, anybody here ever been on a cruise? Yeah. Well, being on a stranded cruise ship is a little like being here tonight. <laughs> but they say that the stench on this boat, it was like rotting food and urine. <laughs> New Yorkers recognize that, of course, as the subway. <laughs> Yikes. All the passengers had to eat for five days uh, a Spam. They finally airlifted in some Spam and Pop-Tarts. Uh, it's not that bad, is it? Spam and Pop-Tarts? Take a look at the green room. Look at this. You can do a lot worse than... And, of course, the occasional... They're now saying that this is the worst uh, pleasure cruise in the history of pleasure cruises. <laughs> the biggest disaster since Regis, since Regis forgot the words to dunk a shame. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, uh, it's called the Splendor. Splendor. And uh, Carnival Cruise uh, Lines, that operates the Splendor. <laughs> Apologized, and they said, here's what we're going to do. We're going to give you a 25% discount on your next cruise. <laughs> Where do I sign? Oh. Come on, let's... Oh, let me out. You folks, uh, as you know, you're in New York City, the greatest city in the world, and one of the reasons uh, it's the great city is uh, the mayor of this uh, wonderful town, Mayor... Uh, what's the guy's Bloomberg, Dan. <laughs> Mayor Bloomberg, you've uh, probably... You've David right Letterman, yeah. that is really... He has uh, declared war on soup. Mm. Because it's too salty. <laughs> Proclaimed that soup is too salty. This guy think he is a sheriff of Nottingham? Whoa, whoa. <laughs> what are we talking about? Is it, but that's how it... <laughs> Don't laugh, that's how it starts. First, they take away your soup. Next, they take away your gravy. <laughs> See where this is going? <laughs> like Prohibition, earlier today, Paris Hilton was arrested because she had bullion cubes in her purse. Oh, honest <laughs> to God. What do you... Hey, hey. 
You know what I'm fascinated uh, by, ladies and gentlemen, the uh, ever-changing, uh, multifaceted nature of the, the human being. Uh, and there was a new study. Do you like new studies? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Desperate to find something you're interested in. <laughs> well, yeah, new study, sure, kind of. Um, uh, 31 million Americans live alone now. They say that this is the new normal. 31 million uh, live, live alone. So you see, uh, there is no stigma for Jennifer Aniston. It's okay. <laughs> it's fine. Anybody here still smoke cigarettes? Like uh, the President of the United States? <laughs> and and they're, up to, they're up to like $12 a pack, and, and, but yet people still are smoking uh, cigarettes. And uh, the Surgeon General said that they're going to increase the severity of the warning on the packs of cigarettes so that when you buy them, you're, they're repellent. We, no, honest to God, they're making them more and more graphic. We have the new warning labels here. Look at this. Look at that. That's John Boehner. <laughs> Smoking can turn you orange. <laughs> Look at that. And those... And those are the Marlboro Lights. <laughs> Think about the original. George W. Bush got a, uh, oh, his memoir. Uh, about eight years in office, it's called uh, Decision Points. Uh, many have already decided not to buy it. Right. That's... Um, the... Uh, but he, I'll say this, the president looks great now, and he's everywhere talking about his book, and he's being very candid. In one interview, he said that he used to do stupid things while he was drunk. <laughs> but think about it. Who among us hasn't had a couple of drinks and invaded Iraq? Who? <laughs> think about it. It, it happened. And you know, Bush's wife, uh, Laura, uh, was a librarian, was a librarian. And, and coincidentally, she's the only thing you ever checked out at the library. Whoa. The only thing. <laughs> President Bush is everywhere. He's been on uh, the uh, Larry King show. Uh, he's been on the Today Show he's with Matt Lauer. He's been on all of the programs. He was on Rachel Ray this morning. Uh, waterboarding a veal cutlet. <laughs> uh, and I'm, <laughs> I'm... I'm told him... Uh, the, do we have him here uh, via satellite? He can't because of... But we have him on the satellite, is that right? Here, ladies and gentlemen, former President of the United States, George W. Bush. Good evening, Mr. President. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Nice to see you. Thank you very much for being here. The... Uh, could you tell us a little bit about the uh, process of uh, writing the book and, and uh, reflecting on your eight years in office? <laughs> was it, excuse me, Mr. President, was it your idea to, to make the book uh, based around decisions you made while uh, president? <laughs> Mr. President, excuse me. Are you okay? I don't, I don't think he can uh, apparently. Let's, let's check in a little later with the former president. Thank you very much. I think it's my fault. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you folks are here. I'm glad you're in a great mood. We have a brand new segment for you tonight. Now, this is going to be insightful. I want you to uh, straighten yourselves up and listen intently. This is going to be great. The segment is called, We've Never Done It Before, Oh, now I get it. <laughs> so you see what we're trying to do here? We're trying to clear things up for the great American viewing public. A new segment, Oh, Now I Get It. Take a look. It is worth remembering the so-called underwear bomber last year was hiding explosives in his underwear. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what that means exactly. Uh, uh, oh, 
well, we're talking about uh, George W. Bush is everywhere with the new book. And on uh, Tuesday, I think he spoke with uh, Sean Hannity uh, on Fox. We have a clip of that. This was fascinating. Watch. George W. Yeah, on Fox. The job was done. And you seem even more at peace now. I am at peace. And uh, I, I was honored to serve the country. <laughs> Just ahead, top 10 ways to make the G27 more exciting and share. Visit CBS.com to check out Bon Jovi live on Letterman. Bon Jovi's exclusive online concert from the Ed Sullivan Theater is available on demand. Stick around. When they had the uh, the mystery missile a couple of days ago in California, yes, and it blew up and it took off and uh, nobody knows what it was. Yeah, Alan, what is uh, our uh, mystery missile tonight? Dave, tonight's mystery missile is a whole wheat baguette. Sponsored by Super Polygrip, it's crazy glue for your gums. Wow. Alan, when since when does the mystery missile have a sponsor? Mind your own business, ass. Okay. All right, here we go. Here's the mystery missile tonight. It's a whole wheat baguette. What happened there? <laughs> what happened at the end? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> this goes to show. If you have enough thrust, you can make anything fly. Right. <laughs> is this, can I go ahead and? Yeah. That phone here is 1978 calling. <laughs> yeah, this is one of those cell phones. Oh. It's the size of this cable. Ah. Look at that. Yeah. yeah, right. Okay, we go right to the substation. Uh-uh. Yeah, right. Here, here, here you go. Keep the change. Now get out. Yeah. Hello? Yeah, yes. Could I speak to Pat? Pat to, yes. Pat Sajak? Yes. Uh, this is Pat Sajak. How can I help you? Yeah, make, make the damn puzzles easier. Well, you know, it's funny that you call in because last week a woman on the show solved the puzzle after revealing only one letter. Yeah, I, 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 I seen that. I called the FBI. Did you hear me? The damn FBI. That little tootsie is looking at hard time, buddy. Adios, sayonara, goodbye, and good luck in prison, you crooked little beanbag. Enjoy the delousing. Enjoy the beatdowns. Enjoy the high starch prison chow. Yeah, good luck in the old gray bar high hotel, honey. Uh huh. So you're you're saying that she did something illegal? Mm. You think? I'm sick and tired of you and all your pretty boy communists sticking up for this criminal. Where's her birth certificate? <laughs> I don't know. Billy! What? Billy! Billy! Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you and Leno and Conan and Regis can all just kiss my ass. Uh -huh. Hey, Billy, bring in the doggies again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. I think I, I think I have to go now. Thanks. Uh, wow. Well, that was refreshing. Ladies and gentlemen, here's tonight's top ten list. Let's try that. <laughs> top ten ways to make the G20 summit more exciting. Here we go. Number ten. More exciting, are you mad? Number nine, <laughs> change focus from global economy to movie and television trivia. Number eight, legalize helmet to helmet hits. Number seven, no one allowed to speak until they've thrown back a couple of Jaeger shots, dude. 
Uh, number six, more exciting. Are you mad? Uh, that joke was number ten. Who checks these things? Number five, <laughs> replace elegant buffet spread with tray of McRibs. Number four, puppets. Number four, puppets. And number three, rename it OMG20. OMG20. And number two, bottomless cup of General Foods International Coffee. And the number one way to make the G20 Summit more exciting, strand world leaders on a Carnival Cruise Liner 150 miles at sea. Uh, we'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen, with Cher. Trying to say something, sir? Is Cher about to come out now? Yep. There's something I need to do. Oh, no. Oh, no. Now what? Me, but what was that uh, all about? I just wanted to look my best for Cher. <laughs> Mission accomplished. <laughs> Our first guest is a uh, Grammy Award winner, an Emmy Award winner, and an Academy Award winner. Look, right, she's right there, as a matter of fact. Her new film is entitled The Burlesque. It opens November 24th. Ladies and gentlemen, here she is, the one, the only Cher. It's good to see you again. I don't know how long it's been, but thank you very much for being here. It's, uh, it's been a long time. Long time, really a long time. And, and you know, we were talking about it. Uh, it was, uh, I think, about 23 years ago, almost this week, that you and Sonny came together on the old show at NBC. Oh, and we did. I got you, babe. Yeah, yeah, 23 years ago. Yeah. That's crazy. 
<laughs> this is my my favorite picture of my entire television career. Right. right. Here. There you are. And what are you looking at? <laughs> You see what I'm saying? Right. November 13th, 1987, 23 years ago. Wow, that's just, uh, where, where does the time go, as people always say. But how long ago was it when I called you an ass? Uh, just before the show. No. <laughs> oh, that was, I think that was before this. No, it was way before that. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, w <laughs> Uh, the, the reaction is just tremendous, and I think, well, how can you go anywhere because everybody knows you, and, and it's impossible for them not to react? I mean, can you? You can't go anywhere, can you? No, I, I do. I, you know, people are very kind to me, and uh, and um, and it. I, I figured out it takes as as much time to say no as it does to say now it's everyone's got a camera in their right. phone so it's like will you take a picture with me okay fine mm -hmm. you know and the only time it's rough is like well the paparazzi are nightmares so they're never nice they're always just crap and uh, <laughs> and uh, and but the people are really sweet do, do they are they ever uh, uncertain that it's actually you are they sort of stunned they think oh my god is it is it you well, um, yes. I went to a bar mitzvah. No, it wasn't a bar mitzvah. It was a wedding. Two guys. <laughs> right. It wasn't a bar mitzvah. <laughs> right. It was a gay Jewish wedding. Mm -hmm. For me, it was like a busman's holiday, okay? <laughs> and so I'm, I went in the bathroom, and I'm coming out, and a woman goes, Miss, Miss. And she comes running after me, and she grabs my hand, and she goes, oh, my God, could I have your card? Because you are the best I have ever seen. <laughs> and I am so dense, I'm thinking, I don't have a card. I don't carry cards. <laughs> and then, as I'm thinking that, she looks at me, and she goes, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> she thought you were yes. a share? Yes, a very good share impersonator. <laughs> Well, you but know, you once, are. okay, once I was at Bergdorf's, right? I was at Bergdorf's, and, you, and at Bergdorf's they've got a one escalator going down and another escalator going up, and you can see the people as you pass. So these girls, these young girls, said, uh, one girl said, "Oh, that's Cher," and the other girl said, oh, "Don't be ridiculous. Cher's nose is much bigger than that girl's." <laughs> so, so you get those people too. Yeah, yeah. The you, uh, uh, are you the, how, how many more uh, months are you going to do on the, the Las Vegas thing? You've been I there. I have one month to go, and yeah. then I'm gone. Has that been good? You enjoyed that? Yeah, it's been very different because the people are pretty old. <laughs> and, uh, and I always think, you know, in the beginning I thought, oh, what a pain in the ass. But then I thought, you know, this might be the last concert they ever see. <laughs> <laughs> now, wait a minute. <laughs> no. That's not true. I believe it is. The, the, I, I don't believe, there, there, I'm sure there were older people in the audience, but I'm, I, I can't believe that it's all old people. No, sometimes we have some young people. Lot, we have lots of gay people, thank God. And, um, <laughs> but the people come in oxygen sometimes. <laughs> I'm not kidding, because the, the tickets are very expensive, so my kids, you know, my fans have a hard time with it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's... But it's, it taught me a lot, you know? It taught me a lot, because in the beginning, I was very like, you know, I don't want to do this. I'm young, and then I'm think thinking, I'm probably older than most of these people taking oxygen. <laughs> but you don't... Would you, would you rather stay there and work a, a full year as opposed to traveling around the country? You know, I, I've done it now for three years, and I've and I've really um, I've really learned to enjoy myself, truthfully, because of this kind of because the people are older, and I'm thinking this is a good thing. And but I like playing arenas better because the people who come there really know my material, and they're very mm -hmm. you know. I say I have this one thing, which I'm sure is true where, you know, the guy says to his wife or girlfriend, I'm going to take you to see the naked old bitch, and then I'm gambling. <laughs> and, and, uh, and I'm sure that that's true. Wow. 
Three years you've been in Las Vegas with the show? Yep. Yeah. Uh, just say anything you want as we work our way down this list. Okay. Warren, no. Warren Beatty? Yeah. Okay. Tom Cruise? Yeah. Elvis Presley? And almost. What, what happened that was... Almost? I got nervous. Really? Yeah. What was the uh, evening like? It was, I didn't get there. Yeah. I was that nervous. So you, you never actually went out with it? Nope. David. I wish that I had. Yeah. Marlon Brando, Marlon too, Brando. I wished I had. D you didn't go out with Marlon Brando? Well, we just hung out for a while. Okay. Uh, but I wished I had. Gene Simmons? Yes. What is this? Is my life in men? No, it's just. <laughs> it's come to that. It's beneath you. Ben well, Bernanke? No, that's not true. What? <laughs> Ben Bernanke? Yeah. No, Larry he's, Summers. He's on, he's on the list here. Um, uh, Michael Bolton? No. Uh, Eric Clapton? Once. <laughs> Does it just take once to get on the list? Is that all it is? No. No, I what what is it? What did I do? <laughs> I don't know. I just these are these are people, famous people you've known in your life. Yes. Well, you've led a very interesting life. There's lots more than that. <laughs> now I don't I don't want to be uh, coarse about this. Oh come on, you will be. But <laughs> but when you say there's lots more than this, in round numbers. <laughs> Well, I mean, we're not talking Cleopatra numbers here, yeah. you know, but no, no I, you know what the truth is? Everyone was more promiscuous than me. I promise really? you, all my girlfriends mm -hmm. just were, it was the time too. But no, I was kind of, um, you know, I, I'd been married to Sonny for so long, 11 years. And so when I got out, I was really excited, but I wasn't quite with it. Yeah, but you were, you were married quite young too. Yeah, 16. Yeah. yeah. So is it under 100? <laughs> I'm sorry. We'll be right back with Cher, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you and Sonny uh, visited us uh, November 13th, 1987. You called me an ass. <laughs> May 22nd, 1986. Okay. Yeah, so we just well, get the chronology. Get yes, straight. for historians. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't, uh, you live in Las Vegas, you also live in California, is that no, right? No, no, I don't live in Las Vegas. I go up, I play Las Vegas four days a week. I go up Tuesday night, do Tuesday show, fly, do Sunday, sh or do t Wednesday show, fly back. Go up Saturday to Saturday, Sunday fly home. Wow, and you're making huge sums of money, aren't you? Enormous sums of money. <laughs> and, and, and why not? Good, good for you, you know? That's just great. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about uh, Chaz. Can we do that? Sure. This is uh, the, 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 a child you and Sonny had together. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Chastity Bono. Right. Uh, and uh, some, I don't know how long ago, uh, announced that there was going to be a gender change. Right. Yeah. And, and, uh, did you see this coming? Did you feel it coming? Did you know, were you aware of it at you any know, level? You know, during the years we had talked about it. And, um, and I don't really know what made her kind of change her mind. Well, I still haven't got the pronouns right, but she says that's not so important. Mm -hmm. But uh, change, she had changed her mind, he had changed his mind. And then, it, and then it didn't make very much difference, but it kept kind of nagging and nagging. And mm -hmm. then he said to me one day, um, I think I really have to do this. Yeah. At, at what age did you start having these conversations that w where there was confusion and, and frustration on, on then her part? About... I guess as long ago as maybe 10, 12 years ago. Yeah. So she would have been at that age, how old? In her 30s. In her 30s. Now is, uh, because I'm ignorant about many things. I uh, know. The <laughs> uh, 
Uh, uh, there, she is was 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 not a lesbian. Was a lesbian. Was a lesbian. Was a lesbian. And, is. and now, is a lesbian. Yeah, but but, uh, but it's not the same now. Right, but it's she's a male lesbian. Right. <laughs> well, but no, that, no, 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 no. That, that doesn't not work. That, no, it doesn't work at all. No. It, but it's transgender. Right, but she, and she has a beautiful girlfriend. But is it is it? <laughs> And, I, and I've heard people say, I, I was a man trapped in a woman's body, I was a woman uh, trapped in a man's body, or in Charlie Sheen's case, I was a hooker trapped in a closet. <laughs> uh, but, but is that different th th than what we think of as a, as a lesbian or a male homosexual? Oh, gosh, yes. It's like I was trying to explain to someone the other day, you know, I really like being a woman. I feel so comfortable in my body. And if I woke up and I, and I was in a man's body, I would think, oh, my God, i got to get out of here, you know? And, and that's the way Chas felt, you know? It's like it, it was never comfortable. Mm -hmm. And, and she's comfortable now. He's very, comfortable now. Oh, he's yeah. very comfortable. And, and through it all, uh, just imagine now as a parent, uh, concern, must have been great concern, that he, he, she know, knew what she was doing. But the, the day that, that um, we talked about it, really that we talked about it seriously, I said, you know, if you have to do this, you just have to do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I wasn't able to always be through the process. I wasn't able to always be quite as calm but that day I was so calm and and uh, and I just thought you know this is this is what has to happen right. and this is a a surgical biologic surgical change is that correct right yeah. right yeah. and 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 I think to a lot of people that seems extreme uh, so uh, so again if, if a person is a, a homosexual what's the difference that compels them to make that surgical change it's not the same thing. It's not the same thing. It, it's being in the wrong body. You feel like you're in the wrong body. Chas counsels small children who, from the time of, you know, two, three, four, five, they just go, I don't want to wear, I want to wear a dress, or I don't want to wear a dress, I, you know, or call me Jack, you yeah. know? Uh, it, it, it seems to be happening. You, maybe it's not ha seeming to be happening younger and younger. It's just that people are, are more aware of right. what their children are saying. And, and do people come to you and now saying, uh, as, as a parent of a transgender uh, person, how, how do I deal with this? Are, are you now helpful to, to other people in this situation? Not very many people have come up to me, but a lot of people have come up and said, Chaz is very brave. And, and uh, I mean... Because to make this decision with me as your mother, you know, uh, it's it's uh, it, it's difficult because you're in the limelight. There's no place you're going right, to hide. Right. So I, I wonder if this having you as a mother actually, in many ways, made it easier for her to do this, and in many ways, perhaps, made it more difficult. Is what you're saying? I don't know. You'd have to talk to Chaz. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, it's fascinating, though. But Bill Maher had a picture of me, kind of pissed me off, had a picture of Chas saying, she, you know, she's going to do transgender, and then he had a picture of me in, I don't know, probably that outfit, since it seems that everyone loves that outfit. And he'd go, but if this was your mother, you would too. You know? Now, what does that mean? I don't know. F*** him. <laughs> Take him right off the list. Right. We'll be right back with Cher, ladies and gentlemen. Catch tomorrow's Late Show with Dave's guest, Kelly Ripa, comedian Greg Fitzsimmons, and Reba McIntyre. The Late Show would like to say Happy Veterans Day. We're grateful to America's veterans and current members of the armed forces for their service. We'll be back in a moment. No, not down here. We were, um, uh, this is hard to believe that uh, you and Sonny, together as a recording uh, uh, team, Right. Uh, Sonny and Cher uh, had uh, uh, half a dozen number one records, or uh, was it how many number one records did they have, Paul? 
Got to be like 12, I bet. Yeah. Uh, individually or, or together as Sonny okay, and Cher. Right. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And so, uh, wh what about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? That that seems like it. Are they? Uh, be a Absolutely, should be a shoe. Well, you know people yeah. over there, don't you, Paul? Will you take care of that? I don't know anybody over there. <laughs> uh, you know, it's just that, that it's, there's a cool factor, and you can actually, there's people much younger than I am and who've done, well, I mean, I'm older, so I, I've done more, but it, it's a cool factor, and if they don't think that you are, then you don't get in. But then, of course, Philip is in, so, and he's in jail now, but, you know, <laughs> so... Who knows? Yeah. Well, uh, I think it's all about timing, and it will be uh, corrected. And I'll be 70. Uh, uh, let's talk about this uh, movie. Uh, uh, now, when I was a kid, uh, they still had live burlesque, and you could, if you were like 16, you could kind of sneak in, and you could see uh, women uh, dancing around and taking their clothes off, and it was, I think, uh, a version of the classic burlesque. Right. Now, but ours isn't like that. Not ours exactly are, like that. No, ours, our women are beautiful, but they don't take their clothes off, but they don't have much to start with anyway. Right. You know, but I mean, it, it's very beautiful and very, I mean, in great taste. It's, it's more a show girl than burlesque women. Right. If that's the But then the, there are, then there are, we have actually burlesque acts in the middle of it, mm -hmm. you know, so it's a kind of a hybrid. It's like, you know, Nouveau burlesque. Are there, are there, there are still, are there are new places like this in Los Angeles? There right? are, yes, absolutely. Yeah. It's popular. And uh, uh, places like this in Las Vegas? Uh, you know, I think, well, the Pussycat Dolls are there, yeah. and they do a certain kind of it, but ours is a, well, I mean, it's a film, so it's pretty blown out. You know, this uh, uh, Christine Aguilera, whoa, what a kid, huh? Yeah. Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> Uh, where did you film the, the film, the movie? We did it on the Sony lot, and they made the most beautiful set, like something that you haven't seen since the MGM days. Just the, it's so beautiful. The film is really beautiful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the music's tremendous. Yes. Yeah. We're going to show a clip here. The thing opens, burlesque, uh, November 24th, uh, just in time for Thanksgiving. Should I set it up? Yeah. I don't know what it is. <laughs> You're talking to Kristen Oh, Aguilera. I'm talking to uh, Kristen Bell and Christina. Aguilera. Uh, about yeah, and, and Kristen is drinking and drugging, and, and I'm really pissed at her. That's right. And I'm telling these two girls what they're going to do. Okay, and you, you, you own and run the show. Right, I'm, okay. the, I'm the mother. Yeah, here we go. Cher Burlesque opens November 24th. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> wait a minute, wait. Hey, 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 what's in that? Iced tea. Ice tea my ass. Go home. Yeah, right. I'm about to go on. No, no, you're not gonna go on. You're gonna go home. Relax. It is one drink. What is the big deal? Allie, you're gonna take Nikki's spot. She can't dance my part. Oh, yeah, she can and she will. Uh, no, no, no. Oh, my God. I can't, I can't do that. No, it no, no, wait. Nikki's you number. said you can do any number, right? I just don't want to step on anybody's toes. Then don't. I don't get... Listen to me. You're gonna go on and you're gonna go home. Here, put this on. Yes. Yes. Well, there you go. Right. It opens November 24th, and by God, that's what Thanksgiving is all about. <laughs> that's exactly what it's all about. Thank you so much for being here. The name of the film is Burlesque. This, of course, is Cher. Behave yourself, says Georgia. Welcome to Burlesque. Our uh, next guest is a uh, popular singer, songwriter, and producer. His debut album is entitled Doo Wops and Hooligans. Please welcome Bruno Mars, everyone. One, two, three, four. Easy come, easy go, that's just how you live Oh, take, take, take it all, but you never get Should've known you were strong from the first kiss Had your eyes wide open, I want that open Gave you all I had and you tossed it in the trash Tossed it in the trash, you did To give Watch 
Thank you. Thank you, sir. You must be Bruno. I'm Bruno. I'm Dave. Yes, that was Dave. beautiful. Doo-wops and hooligans. Tremendous. How about, a, how about the strings? Very nice. Oh, Thank you, everybody. Oh, it's Bruno Mars, everybody. That's it. We got to go. Thanks for watching. Good night. Now, stay tuned for Craig Ferguson. This is Alan Coffey speaking. Good night, everybody. Return to your home.